Chapter Seven of Book Six of Physics by Aristotle, translated by Thomas Taylor. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jeffrey Edwards. Chapter Seven. But that in which that which is changed is first changed is necessarily an indivisible. But I call that first which is not such from something else belonging to it being first. For let A, C be divisible, and let it be divided in B. If, therefore, it is changed in A, B, or again in B, C, it will not be first changed in A, C. But if it is changed in each, for it is necessary either that it should have been changed or that it should change in each, it will also be changed in the whole. But it was changed. The same reasoning applies if it changed in the one but has been changed in the other, for there will be something prior to that which is first, so that the first in which that which is changed is changed will not be divisible. It is evident, therefore, with respect to that which is corrupted, and that which is generated, that the one is corrupted, and the other generated, in an indivisible. Chapter 8 But that in which a thing is first changed is predicated in a twofold respect. 1. That in which primarily the mutation is perfect, for then it is true to assert that it has been changed, but the other, that in which it began to change. Hence, that which is said to be first according to the end of the mutation is inherent, and is, for it is possible that mutation may be perfected, and there is an end of mutation which has been shown to be indivisible, because it is a boundary. But in short, there is not mutation which is predicated with reference to the beginning, for there is not a beginning of mutation, nor a first time in which a thing is changed. For let A, D, be a first time. This, therefore, is not indivisible, for it would happen that nows would adhere to each other. Again, if it is at rest in the whole time A, C, for let it be supposed to be at rest, it will also be at rest in A so that if A, D, is without parts, it will at the same time be at rest, and have been changed. For it is at rest in A, but is changed in D. Since, however, A, D, is not without parts, it must necessarily be divisible, and have been changed in every part of it. For A, D, being divided, if it has been changed in neither part, neither will it have been changed in the whole. But if it changes in both, it will also change in the whole. And if it is changed in one of these, it is not first changed in the whole, so that it is necessary it should have been changed in every part. It is evident, therefore, that there is not a time in which a thing is first changed, because the divisions are infinite. Hence, neither of that which is changed is there any first part which is changed. For let D, F, be that which is first changed of D, E, since it has been shown that whatever is changed is divisible. But let the time in which D, F, is changed B, H, I. If, therefore, D, F, is changed in the whole time, that which is changed in half the time will be less and prior to d f. And again there will be another part prior to this, and another prior to that, and thus perpetually, so that there will be nothing first changed of that which changes, that there is not therefore anything first, neither of that which changes, nor of the time in which it is changed, is evident from what has been said. But that which changes, 
or that according to which it changes will no longer subsist in a similar manner for there are three things which are considered in mutation that which changes that in which and that according to which it changes as for instance man and the time and that which is white man therefore and the time are divisible but concerning that which is white there is another reason except that all divisible things are according to accident for that to which quality or whiteness happens is divisible for with respect to such things as are said to be divisible essentially and not according to accident neither in these will there be that which is first as for instance in magnitudes for let there be a magnitude a b and let it be first moved from b to c if therefore b c is indivisible that which is without parts will adhere to that which is without parts but if it is divisible there will be something prior to c into which it will have been changed and again something prior to that and thus perpetually because division never fails so that there will not be a first into which it will be changed the like also will take place in the mutation of quantity for this too is in continuity it is evident therefore that in that motion alone which is according to quality it is possible for the essentially indivisible to subsist chapter nine since however everything which changes changes in time and a thing is said to change in time both as in that which is first and as with reference to something else as for instance in a year because it changes in a day this being the case it is necessary that a thing should change in every part of that time in which that which first changes changes but this is manifest from definition for we thus denominate what is first it is also evident from the following considerations for let that in which a thing that is first moved is moved b x r and let it be divided in k for all time is divisible in the time x k therefore it will either be moved or not be moved and again in a similar manner in the time k r if therefore it is moved in neither it will be at rest in the whole time since it is impossible for that to be moved which is moved in no part of this but if it is alone moved in the other it will not have been first moved in x r for motion subsists with reference to another it is necessary therefore that it should be moved in every part of x r chapter ten this being shown it is evident that everything which is moved must have been previously moved for if in the time x r it is first moved through the magnitude k l that which is moved with equal celerity and begins to be moved at the same time will be moved through half that magnitude in half the time but if that which has equal celerity is moved through a certain part in this time it is necessary that the other also should have been moved through the same magnitude so that what is moved will have moved farther still if we say that it has been moved in the whole time x r or in short in any time whatever in consequence of receiving the ultimate now of that time for this it is which terminates and that which subsists between the nows is time if this be the case in other times also it may be similarly said to have been moved but the division is the extremity of the half so that it will have been moved in the half and in short in every part for always together with section time is bounded by nows if therefore all time is divisible and that which subsists between nows is time hence whatever changes will have been changed infinitely again if it is necessary that what continually changes and is neither corrupted 
nor ceases from mutation should either change or have been changed in any time whatever but a thing cannot change in the now it is also necessary that it should have been changed in every now so that if the nows are infinite everything which changes will have been infinitely changed but it is not only necessary that what changes should have been changed but it is likewise necessary that what is changed should previously change for everything which is changed from something into something has been changed in time for let a thing have been changed in the now from a to b hence in the very now in which it is in a it has not been changed for if it had it would be at the same time in a and b for that a thing which is changed when it is changed is not in this boundary a has been shown before but if it is in another boundary there is time between for nows do not adhere to each other since therefore it is changed in time and all time is divisible it will be changed in half the time and again in the half of that half and thus perpetually so that it will previously change farther still what has been said will be more evident in magnitude because magnitude is continued in which that which changes is changed for let anything be changed from c to d hence if c d is indivisible the impartible will adhere to the impartible but since this is impossible it is necessary that what is between should be magnitude and should be divisible into infinite parts so that it will previously change into these it is necessary therefore that everything which is changed should previously change for there is the same demonstration in things which are not continued as for instance in contraries and contradiction for let us assume a time in which it is changed and again we shall say the same things so that it is necessary that what is changed should change and that what changes should have been changed likewise the being changed is prior to changing and changing to the being changed and a first can never be assumed but the non-adherence of the impartible to the impartible is the cause of this for the division is to infinity in the same manner as in lines which are increased and diminished it is evident therefore that what was generated was necessarily generated before and that what is generated was generated viz this is true of such things as are divisible and continued yet not always that which is generated but sometimes something else as for instance something belonging to it as the foundation of a house the like also takes place in that which is corrupted and in that which has been corrupted for since that which is generated and that which is corrupted are continuous a certain infinity is immediately present with these and it is not possible that anything can be generated which has not been generated nor have been generated which was not generated the like also takes place in the being corrupted and in the having been corrupted for the having been corrupted will always be prior to the being corrupted and the being corrupted to the having been corrupted it is evident therefore that it is necessary that what was generated should have been generated before and that what is generated was generated for all magnitude and all time are always divisible so that they cannot be primarily in that in which they are chapter eleven but since everything which is moved is moved in time and passes through a greater magnitude in a greater time it is impossible that a finite space can be moved through in an infinite time when that which is moved is neither always moved through the same nor through some part of it but is moved in the whole time through the whole if therefore anything is moved with an equal celerity it is manifestly necessary that it should be moved through a finite magnitude in a finite time 
for a part being assumed which will measure the whole space in as many equal times as there are parts it is moved through the whole space hence since these are finite and each is a quantity and all are assumed a certain number of times the time also will be finite for it will be so many times so much as the time of a part multiplied by the number of the parts but if it should not be moved with an equal celerity it is of no consequence for let a and b be a finite interval through which something is moved in an infinite time and let the infinite time b c d if therefore it is necessary that it should be moved through one part prior to being moved through another this also is evident that in the prior and posterior part of the time it will be moved through different parts of the interval for in a further time it will always be moved through another part whether it be changed with an equal or with an unequal celerity and no less so whether the motion suffers intention or remission or whether it remains the same let therefore any part of the interval a b be assumed viz a e which will measure the interval a b this part therefore will be passed through in some portion of the infinite time for it cannot be passed through in an infinite time because the whole interval is passed through in an infinite time again therefore another part will necessarily be passed through in a finite time if i assume a part as great as a e since the whole is passed through in an infinite time and thus by assuming one part after another since there is no part of the infinite which measures it for it is impossible that the infinite should be composed from finites whether they be equal or unequal because things which are finite in number and magnitude are measured by a certain one and that not the less whether they be equal or unequal if they are of a definite magnitude and since the finite interval is measured by the quantity a e hence that which is moved will be moved in a finite time through the space a b the like also will take place in a progression to rest so that neither is it possible for anything to be generated or corrupted which is always one and the same the same reasoning also will prove that neither can anything be moved through the infinite in a finite time nor proceed to rest whether it be equably or unequably moved for any part being assumed which measures the whole time in this part it will pass through a certain quantity and not the whole of the magnitude since it passes through the whole in the whole time and again in an equal part of the time it will pass through another quantity of the magnitude and in a similar manner in each part of the time it will pass through some quantity of the magnitude whether it be equal or unequal to the quantity which it passed through from the beginning for it is of no consequence if only each part be finite for it is evident that the time being consumed the infinite space will not be consumed an ablation taking place which is finite both with respect to quantity and number so that it will not pass through an infinite magnitude in a finite time nor is it of any consequence whether the magnitude is infinite on one side or on both sides for there will be the same reasoning but these things having been demonstrated it is evident that neither can a finite magnitude pass through an infinite space in a finite time on account of the same cause for in a part of the time it will pass through a finite space and in a similar manner in the several parts so that in the whole time it will pass through a finite space but since a finite movable does not pass through an infinite space in a finite time it is evident that neither can an infinite movable pass through a finite space for if the infinite could pass through the finite it is necessary that the finite also may pass through the infinite for it is of no consequence which it is that is moved since in both ways the finite will pass through the infinite 
for when an infinite magnitude as a is moved there will be some part of it in b finite as for instance the part c d and again another and another part and thus it will be perpetually so that it will at the same time happen that the infinite will be moved through the finite and the finite through the infinite for it is not perhaps possible for the infinite to be moved through the finite in any other way than because the finite passes through the infinite either by lation or measuring it so that since this is impossible the infinite cannot pass through the finite but neither can an infinite magnitude pass through an infinite magnitude in a finite time for if it can pass through the infinite it can also pass through the finite since the finite is inherent in the infinite farther still time also being assumed there will be the same demonstration but since neither a finite can pass through an infinite magnitude nor an infinite a finite nor through an infinite magnitude in a finite time it is evident that neither will there be an infinite motion in finite time for what difference does it make whether the motion or the magnitude is supposed to be infinite for it is necessary if either of these is infinite that the other should be infinite also because all lation is in place chapter twelve but since everything is either moved or is at rest which is naturally adapted to be so and where and as it is adapted it is necessary that whatever tends to rest when it tends to rest should be moved for unless it were moved it would be at rest but it is not possible for that to tend to rest which is at rest this then being demonstrated it is evident that it must necessarily tend to rest in time for that which is moved is moved in time and it has been shown that what tends to rest is moved so that it is necessary that it should tend to rest in time again if we say that the swifter and the slower are in time and it is possible to tend to rest swifter and slower therefore a thing tends to rest in time but in any part of the time in which that first tends to rest which so tends it is necessary it should tend to rest for the time being divided if it tends to rest in neither of the parts neither will it tend to rest in the whole so that that will not tend to rest which does tend to rest but if it tends to rest in one of the parts it will not first tend to rest in the whole for according to one part it will tend to rest in this as was before observed of that which is moved but as that which is moved is not in that in which it is first moved so likewise that which tends to rest is not in that in which it first tends to rest for neither of the being moved nor of the tending to rest is there a certain first for let a b be that in which a thing first tends to rest this therefore cannot be without parts for motion is not in that which is without parts because something of it is moved through but it has been shown that what tends to rest is moved and if a b is divisible the thing will tend to rest in any one of its parts whatever for this was shown before that it tends to rest in any part whatever of that in which it first tends to rest since therefore it is time in which it first tends to rest and not an indivisible but all time is divisible to infinity there is not that in which it first tends to rest neither therefore is there a first in which a thing rests that is at rest for it will not rest in that which is without parts because there is not motion in an indivisible but in that in which a thing may be at rest in that also it may be moved for we then say a thing is at rest when that which is naturally adapted to be moved is not moved in that in which it possesses a natural aptitude to be moved again we then also say a thing is at rest when it subsists similarly now and formerly as not judging from one certain thing but from two at the least hence that in which it rests 
will not be without parts but if it is divisible the time also will be divisible and it will be at rest in any one of its parts whatever for this may be demonstrated after the same manner as before so that nothing will be first but the cause of this is that everything is at rest and is moved in time and there is not a first time nor a first magnitude nor in short any first continued quantity for everything continued is divisible to infinity chapter thirteen but since everything which is moved is moved in time and changes from something into something it is impossible that what is moved in the time in which it is moved essentially and not because it is moved in a certain part of that time should be in a certain first for this is to be at rest i e for both a thing itself and each of its parts to be in the same for a certain time for thus we say a thing is at rest when in another and another now it is true to say that both itself and its parts are in the same but if this is to be at rest that which changes cannot wholly be in anything according to a first time for all time is divisible so that in another and another part of it it will be true to say that both itself and its parts are in the same for if it were not so but in one now only it will not be in any time in a certain thing but in the boundary of time but a thing may always abide in something in the now and yet not be at rest in it for it is not possible either to be moved or to be at rest in the now but it is true that a thing is not moved in the now and is in something and it is not possible that it can be in time according to the quiescent for it would happen that what is born along would be at rest chapter fourteen zeno however paralogizes for he says if always everything is either at rest or moved when it is in a place equal to itself but that which is borne along is always in the nows in a place equal to itself an arrow which is borne along is immovable but this is false for time is not composed from nows which are indivisible as neither is any other magnitude there are however four arguments of zeno concerning motion which afford some difficulty to those that solve them the first attempts to prove that a thing cannot be moved because it is necessary that what is borne along should arrive at the half before it arrives at the end which argument we have already dissolved the second is that which is called achilles and is this that the slower when it runs from the swifter will never be overtaken for prior to this it is necessary that the pursuer should arrive thither whence that which fled began to fly so that it is necessary that the slower should always advance a little farther but this argument is the same as that which bisects though it differs in not bisecting the assumed magnitude it is concluded therefore from the argument that the slower is not overtaken but for the same reason with the bisection for it happens in both that the thing in motion does not arrive at the end the magnitude in a certain respect being divided in this also it is tragically added that it will not by the most rapid pursuit overtake that which is slower so that the solution is necessarily the same to think however that the thing which precedes will not be overtaken is false for when it precedes it is not overtaken but at the same time it will be overtaken if it is admitted that a finite space is passed through these therefore are two of his arguments but the third is that which was just now mentioned that an arrow which is borne along stands still this however is inferred from assuming that time is composed from nows for this not being granted there will not be a syllogism but the fourth argument is concerning equal bulks which are moved in the stadium in a contrary direction 
some from the end and others from the middle of the stadium with an equal celerity in which he thinks it will happen that half the time will be equal to the double the paralogism however consists in this that zeno thinks it should be granted that one of these bulks which passes by that which is in motion and the other which passes by that which is at rest are moved with an equal celerity in an equal time through an equal magnitude but this is false thus for instance let the equal bulks a a a a stand still but let the bulks b b b b begin to be moved from the middle of them a since they are equal to these in number and magnitude and let the bulks c c c c begin to be moved from the last these also being equal in number and magnitude and moved with the same celerity as b it will happen therefore that the first b and the first c will be at the same time in the extremity a since they are moved in a parallel direction it will also happen that all c will pass through all a but all b will pass through the half so that the time also will be half for each is equal parallel to each at the same time too it happens that all b will pass by all c for at the same time the first c and the first b are in contrary extremes since the same time is consumed in passing by each b that is consumed in passing by each a as zeno says because both are moved in an equal time parallel to all a this therefore is his reasoning which happens through the above-mentioned falsity neither therefore will there be anything impossible in what we have asserted from the mutation which is in contradiction as if a thing should change from non-white into white and into neither that it will therefore neither be white nor non-white for it does not follow that if the whole is not in either that it will not be called white or not white for we call a thing white or not white not because the whole is such but because most or the principal of its parts are white and it is not the same thing not to be in this and for the whole not to be in this the like also takes place in being and non-being and in other things which subsist according to contradiction for the whole will not necessarily be in either of the opposites but always in neither again in a circle and a sphere and in short in things which are moved in themselves it will happen that these will be at rest for both they and their parts will be in the same place for a certain time so that they will at the same time be at rest and be moved for first the parts are in no time in the same place and secondly the whole also always changes into another for it is not the same circumference which is assumed from the point a from the point b and from the point c and from each of the other points except in the same manner as a musical man and a man are the same because it so happens so that the one will always change into the other and will never be at rest after the same manner the thing takes place in a sphere and in other things which are moved in themselves chapter fifteen these things being demonstrated we say that the impartible cannot be moved except according to accident as for instance the body being moved or the magnitude in which the impartible is inherent just as if that which is in a ship should be moved by the motion of the ship or a part by the motion of the whole but i call that impartible which is indivisible according to quantity for the motions of the parts are different according to the parts and according to the motion of the whole this difference also may be especially perceived in a sphere 
for there will not be the same celerity of the parts which are about the centre of those which are external and of the whole sphere as if there were not one motion as we have said therefore the impartible may be so moved as he who sits in a ship is moved when the ship sails but it cannot be moved by itself for let it be changed from a b into b c whether from magnitude into magnitude or from form into form or according to contradiction but let the time in which it is first changed be d it is necessary therefore that in the time in which it changes it should either be in a b or b c or something of it in this and something else of it in the other for whatever changes thus subsists something belonging to it therefore will not be in each of these for it would consist of parts but neither will something of it be in b c for it will have been changed but it is supposed to change it remains therefore that it is in a b at the time in which it changes hence it will be at rest for to be in the same thing for any time is to be at rest so that the impartible cannot be moved nor in short changed for thus in one way only can its motion subsist if time were composed from nows since a thing would always be moved and changed in the now so that it would never be moved but would always have moved but that this is impossible has been shown before for neither is time composed from nows nor a line from points nor motion from the boundaries of motion kinemata and he who says this does nothing else than assert that motion consists from impartibles just as if he should say that time is composed from nows or magnitude from points again it is also evident from the following considerations that neither a point nor any other indivisible can be moved for with respect to everything which is moved it is impossible that it should pass through that which is greater than itself before it passed through that which is either equal to or less than itself but if this be the case it is evident that a point will be first moved through either that which is less or that which is equal since however it is indivisible it is impossible for it to be first moved through that which is less than itself it will therefore pass through that which is equal to itself so that a line will be composed from points for the point always being moved through that which is equal to itself will measure the whole line if however this is impossible it is also impossible for an indivisible to be moved farther still if everything that is moved is moved in time but nothing is moved in the now and all time is divisible there will be to every movable a certain time less than that time in which it is moved through a space equal to itself for this will be the time in which it is moved because everything is moved in time and it has been before shown that all time is divisible if therefore a point is moved there will be a certain time less than that time in which the point is moved but this is impossible for in a less time it is necessary that it should be moved through a less space so that the indivisible will be divisible into that which is less just as time also into time for in one way that which is impartible and indivisible may be moved if it were possible to be moved in an indivisible now since there is the same reason why a thing should be moved in the now and why anything indivisible should be moved chapter sixteen there is not any infinite mutation for all mutation is from something into something as well that which is in contradiction as that which is in contraries so that of those mutations which subsist according to contradiction affirmation and negation are the boundary as for instance of generation being is the boundary and of corruption non-being but of those mutations which are in contraries 
contraries are the boundaries for these are the extremes of mutation so that this will likewise be the case in all change according to quality for change according to quality is from certain contraries in like manner also this will be true of increase and diminution for the boundary of increase is the end of a magnitude according to its proper nature but of diminution a departure from this magnitude but lation is not thus bounded for not all lation is in contraries since however it is not possible for a thing to be cut unless it were possible that it might have been cut for the impossible is multifariously predicated that which is attended with this impossibility cannot be cut and in short if nothing can be generated which might not once have been generated neither can that which might not have been changed be changed into that into which it might not have been changed if therefore that which is borne along should be changed into anything it will also be possible that it might change so that there will not be infinite motion nor will a thing be impelled through infinite space because it is impossible for the infinite to be passed through it is evident therefore that there is not infinite mutation so as not to be terminated by boundaries it must be however considered whether it be possible that there may be infinite mutation in such a manner that being one and the same it may be infinite in time for not being one nothing perhaps hinders this from taking place as for instance if change according to quality should be after lation and increase after change in quality and again generation for thus there will always be motion in time but not one motion because there is not one motion from all these so that it is not possible there should be one motion infinite in time except the motion which is in a circle End of Book Six Recording in Memory of Mitchell Edwards